night. Welcome back. Now we continue the conversation as we have been joined by the First Lady of Sierra Leone, Madam Fatima Jadibio, as she makes her first public appearance after getting a uh, beautiful, uh, you know, revow or re solarization or, you know, the beautiful white wedding that we all um, witnessed in spirit and in person. So she's here to talk about her free sanitary pad for girls project. Uh, good morning and welcome, Madam First Lady. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning First of all, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first question. Same, same. It's the same um, person. Um, it's not a big deal. It's just that we needed to do something that God has asked us to do. And um, we've done it and it's over. We'll move on. And you're jumping right into work instead of... Uh, Kicking your feet up and just probably getting a day or two of rest. Mm, yes, no, I have to work because um, what I'm trying to do now, the time, what time I have to work, I just don't want to. This is my honeymoon. I'm uh, pushing myself <laughs> to just go and do work and uh, work for the people. For me, that is more rewarding. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, we are all quite familiar with your hands of our girls campaign. And you now have this um, free sanitary towel project that you have, you know, you, you've put together. How does this relate with the Hands of Our Girls campaign and the provision of sanitary towels uh, for girls? Well, the Hands of Our Girls campaign basically is um, how do we protect our girls from being raped? How do we protect our girls from early marriage and teenage pregnancy, child trafficking? But then during the time, the whole of last year while I'm doing the campaign, I then realized that um, some of the issues or some of the reasons why girls become victim of um, rape and um, drop out of school is due to sanitary pads. But you'd be surprised, I, the word sanitary pad for me was never an issue because when that time comes, I have sanitary pad. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think about somebody struggling to have sanitary pad. But I went to England last year, April, um, to launch the African Women's Forum. And then a 17-year-old girl from Tanzania stood up and said to me, Madam First Lady, you, you have a voice that can help us girls. You know, I've been following First Ladies around the world and I believe you can help us achieve this. I said, um, achieve what? He said, do you know how many of us struggle um, to go to school and finish our education just because we cannot afford sanitary pads? I was shocked because sanitary pads has never been an issue around me or people around me. So when I came back, I started engaging school girls, started talking to teachers. Then I realized that Sierra Leonean girls are missing 84 days a year, which is 35% of the school year, just because they cannot afford sanitary pads. And when that time comes for them, when they are seeing their menstruation, they just stay home until they're finished, and then they come back to school. And, but if you miss 35% of your school year, definitely the boys will be ahead of you all the time we're not in competition yeah. with the boys, but then the fact here is menstruation does happen. Menstruation is not a choice. Absolutely. Menstruation is part of us women. You know, it has to happen to us. Now, if girls are missing out of school 84 days, and when I calculate that to the government revenue that has been invested into education, 21% of our national GDP goes into education. So when you have girls missing out 84 days of school, but yet still 21% of our national GDP still goes to education, so nothing changes, then why don't we find a way of making sure these girls stay in school, remain in school, and utilize this 21% of our national GDP and also stay in school, ask the boys so they don't miss out of their education. The whole purpose of the Hands of Our Girl is to be able to 
keep girls in school, make them focus on their education, and forget about these distractions that are happening around the world, concentrate on your education, and acquire the right education that you need so that you develop your future and be a better person tomorrow. But if you're missing 84 days, not by your own choice, but just because you're a woman, then I think that we have to look into it. And that is the reason why I feel um, I have to do something about it. I need to engage as many people as possible. And um, I have a gospel friend who's my childhood friend. We've been friends since we are like 10 years together. And we've been friends ever since Rebecca Atto. She is a renowned gospel singer in the UK and um, a Sierra Leonean. When, I, when this idea came, I said, girl, what do we do? She flew in from the UK like four days after I left the UK um, when this Tanzania kid confronted me. She came in and said to me, I was thinking about sanitary pads for the girls. Have you thought about that? And I started laughing because then I knew God is using these people because I just came from the UK. She was not in that meeting. We did not have this conversation. I came from the UK where she, she, she lives and um, she flew into Freetown and came with the same subject. Can you look into sanitary pads? So I explained the story to her. I said, listen, I met this 17 year old kid and this is exactly what she confronted me with. Said, you know, because I keep, I mean, whenever me and Rebecca were together, she is always talking about Holy Ghost fire, Holy <laughs> Ghost fire. I said, are you sure? You are not using your Holy Ghost fire to chase me around the world now. <laughs> and, you know, we, as sisters, we decided that, you know, she said, I don't have the money, but God has given me the gift of um, 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 singing. And I have a whole lot of gospel singers around the world that are my friends. Can I engage them? And then we can engage the Australian gospel mm. artists and see whether we can put um, um, together a concert and whatever funding we raise there, it goes straight into the sanitary pads. Right. So, so the um, Free Sanitary Pads Initiative is, you know, um, uh, dear to you. You're very pa passionate about it. How do you plan to roll this out? Uh, what's the plan um, for its manufacturing and eventual distribution to young girls in the country? Well, first of all, what you need to do, what I have to do first is to find the money. Because I have tried to, I have presented this to, to the government, you know, um, we're looking at $7 million. At the moment, we don't have that kind of money, $7 million for sanitary pads. So I'm taking the project to the people. When I started the Hands of Our Girl campaign, the Hands of Our Girl campaign became successful because the people on the project, it was the people's project. And I'm looking at Sierra Leoneans knowing full well that we have so many good people in this country. One girl only need $11.50. That's all a girl need for a year, $11.50. So if I don't reach out to people, if I don't actually explain to people the need for sanitary pads, it will just be a project that, you know, you are dying to have for your girls, but you cannot. Because I don't have $7 million lying anywhere in the world. You know, so I have to come back to the people. The people who mandated my husband to be the president of this country, the Sierra Leoneans who do love Sierra Leone dearly, I'm coming back to them and say. Our girls need sanitary pads, and collectively, we can do something about it. It's $11.50. If you don't ask, you don't get help. And I have, I'm not a first lady who is ever ashamed to say, we, I need help. I need help. And, you know, right from the beginning, when this whole thing, when we started talking about it, when we started putting things together, I have engaged the body of Christ. And they said, listen, we are with you 100%. People will ask me why the body of Christ. Reason being is, because I don't want Stella to ask me the question. <laughs> Let me just go straight to the point. The, 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 the concert that I'm trying to do is a gospel concert. There's no way you're going to remove Christianity from gospel. Yeah. 
it's a gospel concert. But also, the fundamental thing for me here, that I am engaging all of these religious leaders, especially the body of Christ, is the fact that I believe when a woman talks about sanitary pad, it's normal. But when a man talks about sanitary pads, it's relevant. And the pastors and the reverend fathers and the bishops and archbishops that we have in this country, they have a congregation that moves Sierra Leone. And I feel it is time for every Sierra Leonean to start to talk about menstruation because it's not a taboo. It is happening. Just as we don't want to talk about sex, but our kids are getting pregnant every day. But we are, we are so ashamed to talk about sex. You don't want to talk about sex, but you know your child is doing it. And then what happened? The child come home one day, they are pregnant. Oh, you don't kill me. You don't put shame on me. Engage the children. They go to church every day. They go to the mosque, you know, time and again. The parents, the teachers. I am asking Sierra Leoneans, it is high time. The generation where you do not talk about sex or menstruation is long gone. At this time where we are, this, this generation that we're, we're in now, the kids are curious. We have to educate our children. We've been lucky when this whole thing started, the Ministry of Education, what they have done that has been very um, fundamental into this project is reintroducing sexual education back in our curriculum. So they will start to talk about it in school. But it will be much, much, you know, relevant if we are all talking about it. Some of these kids, they don't know the danger of sex. They don't know how to even look after themselves when they're seeing their menstruation. Even me, myself, it is the last one year I have been educated so much that girls are struggling when they see their menstruation. So how, how is your office engaging the Ministry of Health? You, you know, they, they have a huge role to play. You know, you, met, you, you stated it clearly. Uh, you know, menstruation is not a choice, but to have sex is a choice. Mm -hmm. And yet you still see um, organizations and even governments around the world um, dishing out free condoms. Yet still, something that is not a choice, such as menstruation, mm -hmm. is not going out for free. No. So how are you engaging the Ministry of, um, of Health um, to also, in their own capacity, engage international partners? If we can give out free condoms, we should be able to give out free sanitary pads. You know what? Whenever, whenever I have the opportunity to address this issue in the last eight months, that has been my subject. I would rather you don't give my kids um, condoms, but give them sanitary pads. I am not saying that condoms should not be used. You use condom because it is your choice. You want sex because it is your choice. Menstruation is not a choice to women. Menstruation is not a choice to our kids. So the money that you spend buying all these condoms, bringing all of this you know, um, when I say there are certain things when I talk, they said this first lady is so controversial. You understand? And I'm tired of people branding me as controversial. I am not controversial. I am just a first lady who say it as it is. The money you spend to buy condoms, the money you spend to bring family planning and insert on my children at the age of 10. 10 year old kids should not be encouraged to go and have sex. Ten-year-old kids should be encouraged to stay in school, remain in school, and finish their education. But then you do have NGOs, you do have this organization Absolutely. coming into your country and dishing out these things. And then you have parents that are okay with it. So what um, engagement, what is the Ministry of Health saying? Because like you've said, you've brought the um, project out to gospel artists to come out and support. But... Um, Sierra Leoneans would think, or one would think, this is also government's business. So what is the government saying with regard to this project, the Ministry of Health and probably even the Ministry of Education? Like I've said to you, um, it is a government business. But there has been government here for 58, 56 years before now. So it should have been every government's business. Now it is a new government. And... This first lady wants to introduce it. Before me, there has been first ladies before me. 
before I came, there's been a whole lot of other first ladies. And I think this should have been an issue that everybody should be talking about because menstruation has been here before I came. So I am introducing this now to my government. And I'm saying to my government, we need this. But I'm not limiting it to just my government because it is not just a government's business. It is everybody's business. Protecting a child should not be a government's business alone. You know, looking after a child and making sure a child is successful should not be a government business alone. It should be a Sierra Leonean business. It, is, it should be a citizen's business. So I'm introducing this as I'm doing it. Like I said, today is my first time I'm bringing this project now to the people, including the government, because the people are government. Can so I'm saying to them, hey, our girls need sanitary pads. Um, Madam First Lady, Salma to Kawat Tarawali says, I think to set up a factory to manufacture it in the country will be more sustainable. Buying it is not the solution. You in a country where we don't have, you know, young people are unemployed. Can this be an initiative by the Office of the First Lady where it is um, manufactured in country so we have people who can be employed the the, the 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 business is generating money to fund itself can that be an initiative as as one of the strategy in bringing this to the people of Sierra Leone thereby it's owned by Sierra Leoneans like, I mean that like I said the last eight months this is all I've been doing working working on the research working on knowing whether the reusable ones are much better for in in not only for hygiene purposes mm -hmm. but cost wise and then how do we bring a factory you don't just say hey factory come and they come no you have to have the money if you do not have the money no factory is coming to your country so we are introducing this to the people first so that the people on the project we are not talking about making sanitary pads to sell to the school kids. I said give to them free. No factory is going to come to make sanitary pads for free and give to your school children for free. So for the factory to come here and, you know, establish here and, you know, we talk about all of the other benefits in terms of work and making sure it is made here, it is laudable and it is possible, but it, it will only be possible when you have the funding. Because if I am going to be saying that we have to give it to them free, somebody have to pay the factory to mm -hmm. make it. So until I'm able to raise as much awareness, until I'm able to raise as much fund as possible, for me to be able to go and sit with a factory manuf I mean, a manufacturer and say, Come to my country and let us start making sanitary pads, which I, I mean, my government will be giving out to our girls free. I have to have funding. Right. And one of the strategies you've, you know, set up to raise funds for this project is this gospel concert mm -hmm. you're talking about. Can you explain what the um, gospel concert would look like and um, how you plan to use it to, to make money for this project? We are talking about 650,000 kids that need sanitary pads in the country. If we have to go, I mean, with the registry that is available um, in with the Ministry of Education, from JSS2 to SSS3, um, so 650,000 young girls that will need sanitary pads. If you don't have to say, I want to choose this one and leave this one. Okay. Now we're talking about close to $7 million. A gospel concert will not Generate give us $7 million. A gospel concert will not even give us $1 million. No. These are artists that want to use their own talent to contribute to this. So I'm saying to every Sierra Leonean, in your own little way, whatever you think you can do, for us to be able to have a sanitary pad for our girls, please engage my office and let us do it collectively. It is not a project that I want to own by myself. I don't want it to be Fatima's project. I just want to be the voice 
that talk to the people about it and let the people on it. The gospel concert, we are hoping that Sierra Leoneans will embrace it and they will remove politics into all of this. I am so sick and tired of everything in this country that you, even if the oxygen you breathe, they will want to make it some red, some green. I'm tired of this. I'm so tired. I do not want people associating everything you do to politics because I believe when we have whatever little number we are able to get into this country mm -hmm. as a starting point, 20,000, 50,000 um, sanitary pads, the schools or the kids that will benefit from these sanitary pads, we are not going to be going to those schools and say, um, which, which party your mother belongs, which party your father belongs. No. We just want to concentrate on the kids that needs them. We're not going to be going to ask about your political background because it is none of my business. I've said this time and again, every human being has the right to belong to a political party that you feel is the one that is right for you. So I want every Sierra Leonean to look at this project not as SLPP project, but as a Sierra Leone project because the kids that need it are SLPP, APC, NGC, C4C, Every political party in this country, their children need sanitary parts. And, and is it just for students or kids in the public school, or are we talking about every kid in Sierra Leone? Every government schools and government assisted schools. Because, like I said, I never knew that sanitary parts is a problem. I believe um, kids that are in private schools will not have that problem. That is my own belief also, you know, if you can afford a private school, you can afford a sanitary pad. My own um, opinion too. But I'm more concentrating on kids that are in government schools and government assisted school. Okay. Because it is the government school and government assisted school that are taking 21% of our okay. national GDP. All right. So what then is the strategy to have the people of Sierra Leone contribute to this whole initiative. I mean, the concert is not the solution, mm -hmm. and the concert, co concert is one-off. Uh, the contribution of Sierra Leone or Sierra Leoneans should be an ongoing contribution and process. What's the strategy? How do people get involved? Uh, someone who is, is uh, far north or far east, how do they get involved without having to come all the way to Freetown, to the office and of the first lady? out of Sierra Leone exactly. as well. We are going to put together a GoFundMe account where anybody who wants to support internationally, you can donate whatever little you want. We will have an account that is specifically there just for sanitary pads. If you want to donate in um, a bank account in Sierra Leone, you'll go into, that, um, into any of those banks you know, that we're, we'll be dealing with and you can donate there. I'm even so Suggesting to government workers, government workers, government workers that are getting salary, if you donate 100,000 of your, your salary for three months yeah. into the sanitary pad project, you will be changing the lives of so many kids in this country. You know, for people who have money, if you can adopt 20, 30, 40, 50 kids and say, I am willing to pay for their sanitary parts. You'll be changing the lives of this, um, these kids. So I'm begging Sierra Leoneans, do not leave this and say, well, oh, this is of SLPP first lady, so I, I don't want to, I'm an APC person. I and today I am wearing red in solidarity of APC. <laughs> so that they know, please, you don't, you, I mean, you might not like me very much because I have a loud mouth, even within the SLPP, I know there are people there that will say, this first lady has a loud mouth. I am just so true to myself, and I say it as it is. Don't think that I am against you or not, because I still believe every human being has the right to have a political yeah. party that they call theirs. And I want Sierra Leoneans to start looking at policies rather than look at color. And me, red is my favorite color. I am going to wear red as long as I want because it is my favorite color. I'm not going to be bad from wearing red because I am 
SAPP. No, I will wear red. Any day I feel like wearing red, I wear it. So I'm saying to Sierra Leoneans, let us remove color in our politics. Let us forget about color in our politics. Let us talk about substance. Let us talk about the issues. Let us talk about policies. And let us see the things that are changing in our country. The positive side. When somebody comes in front of you and say, I want you to vote for me, don't look at the color. Look at what this person is capable of bringing to your country. And, you know, I just want people to remove politics from this sanitary part. Mm -hmm. And I'm begging people, please, you want to talk about politics, look for another agenda. But for sanitary parts, I beg, this one <laughs> has no politics in it. All right, so we have um, some samples here that you brought in. Um, can you just talk about uh, what is in this package and, uh, you know, how people can, how the young girls will use this? How long will it last? Um, probably the materials in it as well. I, I mean, um, I'm not a manufacturer, so I will not be able to give you the materials that are in it. I just know it is a sanitary pad that is good for every woman. I use it myself, this one. Because when they, I mean, I only have few samples of this. So when they brought the samples, I said, let me use it first. Because if it's good for me, then it's good for another person. So we have 120 pieces in this pack. And this 120 pieces will last a girl a whole year. With this, no girl will use sanitary pads as a reason not to be in school anymore. They will be in school. And when they came with this, I opened one of the pads and I said, let me try it with water. I poured up to half of this bottle of, this bottle of water mm -hmm. in it. And I tried on my skin. It was still dry. I still used, I used this. In the last four months, this is what I have been using. And if anybody understands the, the way um, the body works and the way women see their, their menstruation, some women are light, yes, some, some women are heavy. are heavy. I am one of those women that are very heavy. And I use this. And I have used it comfortably. It has not caused me any problem. And it has not done any, I mean, problem for me to be worried about when I have a sanitary pads on, you know, because it is just that time when, when you're seeing your menstruation as a woman. I don't know for, for you ladies, but I am always jumpy. Yeah. I'm always jumpy because, you know, I mean, I know my body and when that time comes, I know it is so heavy. I'm always like, oh, I need to have extra clothes when I'm in public, all of those things. I've been using this for four months and I'm okay. And if any woman is as heavy as me, then you have a product that you can recommend for your child. If you're, if you're a light, then uh, hallelujah which is brilliant then, which means you, you don't have to be worried about anything. So 120 pieces in a pack, and this pack costs $11.50. Production, production cost. Production cost, okay. $11.50 for this pack. From the manufacturer's uh, um, um, place in China, right down here in, into Freetown. Mm -hmm. And then people will say to me, oh, why China? Why are you making this in China? 90% of all sanitary pads in America, in England, in everywhere in the world yeah. is from China. It is just the name. It is the branding. It's how you brand it. So Chinese products are still, are still being sold in America, sold in England, sold in all of Europe. So if it's good for them, it should be good for us too. And why people will say to me, why don't you look at the reusable ones? I have never used um, a, a reusable sanitary pads. And again, it come back down to hygiene for me. You know, and when I checked at the cost, the ones that they, give, they will give, it will last for every th uh, four months. You have to change it. Now, the, the, the pack they give you that will last you for four months is $10. So, which means cost-wise, for a year, a girl needs $30 for you to have a reusable sanitary pads.
for the whole year, thirty dollars, which you can have three of these for mm -hmm. three girls rather than just one girl. So cost-wise, I want to still continue with the the disposable ones. Yeah. You train the girls; they understand how to use sanitary pads, mm -hmm. and then when that time comes for you to do reusable ones. They already know what um, a sanitary pad is all about. Well, we do have a lot of um, organizations that are always usually very keen in supporting the initiative of first ladies around the world. Um, and, you know, a lot of these organizations usually have a lot of funding. Mm. So <laughs> um, how's your office going to interact and really lobby uh, international organizations to support this initiative? Certain unions can pitch in, but I don't know how strong they may be to, to raise uh, $7 million. What are the international options? Okay. I am still yet to see um, the international organization because I have, um, I have been a first lady a little under two years now. You know, um, April will be two years. And the only international organization that comes and want to work or align themselves with my office is UNFPA and um, sometimes save the children. But um, what I am looking for, <laughs> believe you me, UNFPA has never ever, I don't know if they have that kind of money, even if they do have uh, $1 million coming into Sierra Leone, but if they do, it has never come to my office. Mm. The same with, well, let me start with $100,000 because so people don't confuse my, um, things, yeah? If you and FPA have $100,000 to give to um, project, pro, uh, projects that they're doing in Sierra Leone, it has never come to my office yet. Mm -hmm. So we start with $100,000. The same with Save the Children. Let's start with $100,000. It has never come to my office. So, so how, that's the question. How would you engage international organizations, even those out, um, you know, out of Sierra Leone? You, uh, we've got amazing initiatives around the world. For example, Bill Gates Foundation. You have Facebook. There's a lot of community work they do. Google. How, how are you going to tap uh, such organizations to buy into your initiative and, and probably pump in millions of dollars in, now, to support Now, you are it? talking about organizations that concentrate more in America. People, we just need to do our research on these things. These organizations, they have big names. They, they have billions and billions, but it's not for Sierra Leone. They don't give their money to Sierra Leone. The free quality education that we're talking about has been funded by Sierra Leoneans. 21% of our GDP. Who in the world would not want free quality education? But it has not been funded by any international organization at all. It has been funded by the government of Sierra Leone and the people of Sierra Leone. It is the taxpayers' money. We have engaged so many organizations. They have their own way how they do their own thing. Unfortunately, that um, amazing grace has not come down to Sierra Leone yet. Maybe in the future. And that's the reason why I don't want to limit myself to waiting for international organization mm -hmm. when I believe there are good Sierra Leoneans in this country who can do this. Right. You know, international organizations, they're there. But by the time you start running after them today, tomorrow, then you'll be doing nothing in your country because all you'll be doing is chasing them. And I haven't got that time to be chasing them. I'm putting out a project that I believe if you are a humanitarian and you really believe in, in humanitarian work, these are the things that you will want to do. But most of this organization, if it's like they give you this and they want this in return, my office don't have anything in return to give because my office is not, um, it's the first lady's office, but remember, it, I mean, I am the first first lady who have actually have a building as an office. Every other first lady works at home. They create an office at the lodge, and that is where they work. 
I am the only one who said I want to walk outside because you wake up in the morning you just want your mindset to change you dress up go to your office and sit and then you walk when I am at home and I'm smelling the kitchen the food in the kitchen I'll be leaving my office going to the kitchen eat and Africans what do we do you eat the next thing you just want to sleep so I just want to remove myself from that kind of environment and that's the reason why I, I have an office and my office is not my, I pay for my own office as the first lady I pay for my own office I pay my rent I'm paying rent it is not being paid by the government of Sierra Leone either so these are the things that you will think that okay international organization will want to come and say you know what let us pay the, the, the rent for the office of the first lady no they don't so the, the goal now is to raise $7 million mm -hmm. to do the pilot um, um, distribution, which would be, you know, the first distribution of these sanitary pads. But perhaps th it's too early to ask this, but what's the long-term goal? How do you plan to sustain this project um, to make free sanitary towels available to all girls across the country um, mm -hmm. year in and year out? The goal this year is not to rate, not to have seven million. Uh, um, it's not the seven million um, dollars. dollars right now. It's introducing the project to the country, and then get the people to earn the project. Let it be people's project. The goal here, because we are looking at September coming, is when the first batch of whatever quantity we have to be in the country and then we, we go out to schools and make sure we are not giving this product to teachers to distribute, no. As I did for the Hands of Our Girl campaign, I will go to the schools because again, I'm not trying to limit myself as if um, it is impossible to have the, the 650,000 uh, um, sanitary pads that we need against September. I'm not trying to limit myself. But I'm also being realistic here. I am looking at if I have 50,000 today, I will start with 50,000 sanitary pads. If I have 100,000 sanitary pads, I will start with 100,000 sanitary pads. I know gradually people will understand the need of sanitary pads and they will support the project. So when I feel that the people themselves now have earned this project, then all other logistics will be easy. To get a factory to come here to do this, if the money is available, the factory will want to come because they will want to make money. They will come and but make. If, if, let me from from all what you've said, it seems you you really want to detach um, um, the government um, in this project. You don't you don't want to you know work with them probably the ministry of health or education as stella and i have you know mentioned before they seem detached from the project is there a specific reason why um you don't want them to participate or to contribute at all no i never said i don't want them every ministry have what is their priority every ministry have a budget line which is their priority. I don't want to dump this on them if it's not one of their priority. But I'm hoping as we go along, this ministry will see this as a need for the girls. So until that time when they say to me, you know what, we want to be the champion for this, I will continue to be the voice. Is this something you hope to really continue to push long after even you are First Lady? I believe that if um, the, this country understands the need for sanitary parts for our girls and they see the benefit and see the, the way things are changing, just like the free quality education, I don't see any government that will come and will want to remove something that is so good for the people and you said, no, I will not want to continue. You know, when I am not the first lady, uh, when, I, when, I, when I cease to be the first lady of this country, 
that point I will decide on the things that I want to champion. Okay, so we do have a few messages, quite a lot. Uh, someone is asking, I'm trying to find the message here, someone is asking for the GoFundMe page, they would love to contribute and be a part of the initiative. It will be set up very soon. Like I said, today is to introduce it to the nation, and then from here we will set up the GoFundMe um, 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 uh, account, and at the same time, we will set up, we will, we will open an account here and I will come back and I will reintroduce the GoFundMe account. It will be on my page, it will be on the website, it will, all, the, all the account details will be on all my seven pages mm -hmm. and the website of the Office of the First Lady. Mm -hmm. uh, Ajab Mohammed Chabi says, this is laudable, let people learn to produce it locally. I believe we can afford it. Uh, so that's a commendation there. We're going to expect in terms of ticketing. Um, Stella, I don't want to fight you on national, <laughs> on national TV. <laughs> Just said the national stadium, mm. the open stand is 20,000. Okay. And that is to even the school kids themselves, so that they also have, you know, let them also contribute to this project because it is for them. We have covered stand, which is 60,000. Stage area is 75,000. And the presidential um, area is 250,000. The, the concert at the Bintumani would be by donation. And I'm expecting you, Stella, to be donating nothing less than five, five million. Okay. And above. We're hoping that, People you know, have heard that. it is by <laughs> donation. And that is where we want all corporate companies yeah. to come on board and donate as much as they can afford so that we get these um, sanitary pads rolling. We want to start, I mean, I just want to be a realistic person. We want to start yeah. with 100,000 sanitary pads now. And, and then we roll it out and hope that people will, this will not be just a one-off concert thing, but then when we have the GoFunding account and the international organizations that says they are here to help humanity, mm -hmm. they will also want to be part of such a laudable um, uh, yeah. initiative where we will keep our girls in school. 84 days is a whole lot of days for a child to miss out of school just because of something they have no control over, which is menstruation. Yeah. Right. Well, I well, think, I think we need them to come on board. Sister. You know, <laughs> you can have sex by choice, but you can't, you know, have menstruation by choice. So we need that support. Right. Thank, um, you thank you so much for, <laughs> you know, giving AYB the opportunity also to be part of this project and to host you here this morning um, uh, to debut the project on, on our television and radio station. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. It has to be, it has to be AYV. This is, this is a, whatever I do, I align with AYV because AYV has championed the hands of our girl campaign. And uh, when you have a champion, championing and believing in your cause, that is where you go all the time. All right. Thank you. And as um, always, AYV would continue to support. Um, we'll, we'll take it a step at a time, but definitely you. AYV will continue to support. Thank you. Um, I think this is where we end the conversation. It's been, unfortunately, we can't take every question. There are so many questions. But thank you so much, um, all of you. Maybe let me see if I can grab one more. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'll grab 